Hey everyone, it's Strange Michael. I hope you're doing well today. I'm continuing my Halloween movie reviews. This one with a film that came six years after Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. This is Halloween 4 from 1988. The Return of Michael Myers. Look at this cool 4K Shout Factory, Scream Factory, whatever it's called, set release. I love these covers, man. I just got an update a minute ago that my box set for Curse... H2O and Resurrection and this new box set is coming tomorrow before it was released on the actual 8th of the month, which is pretty cool. I'm excited about that. Uh, I was late to the party on pre-ordering mine. Anyway, uh, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, is a very debatable film. Uh, there are people who I love dearly <laughs> in, my, uh, in, the, in the horror community I kind of connect myself most with, mainly with Skeleton Crew and uh, Banana Laser, which are two podcasts. I highly recommend neither of them are around anymore, but it seemed like both of these podcast groups never really had a love for this movie, and I kind of have a nostalgia for this movie, and I appreciate this movie, too. Um, I have my issues with it. It is a flawed movie, but I do want to tell you up front, I kind of like The Return of Michael Myers. I think Halloween 4 overall is a decent film. I think it's well-made. I think it's well-made as a Halloween Michael Myers-centric sequel. Um, in some aspects, I like it more than Halloween 2. In some aspects, I like it less than Halloween 2. Um, sometimes it has great atmosphere. Sometimes it doesn't. There's a lot to be said about this movie, but there's a lot to appreciate about it, too, in my personal opinion. I really like a lot of things that it introduced to the series, mainly Danielle Harris, who I think was a huge, huge national treasure here in America. But uh, I want to start at the basics. I want to start off my typical review stuff. Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers... I've had forever in this two-pack with Halloween 5, and uh, I never really saw Halloween 5 growing up. I saw it maybe once or twice, maybe once, and then I saw pieces of it on AMC during, like, uh, the October Horror Fest thing, and that's really it. <laughs> it's really it. Uh, I didn't really know much about Halloween 5. I didn't know Hall Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, <clears throat> even though I saw bits and pieces of that growing up, too, on TV, like AMC stuff and Sci-Fi Channel. I didn't know I, I didn't even know that particular movie actually existed when I was growing up. I just thought it was like like Halloween Four, Halloween Five, H two O, and that's not the case. <laughs> so I have a very weird nostalgia with these movies. But Halloween Four I always liked, and I always had this set since I was like ten or eleven that my my mom got me years ago. I've owned this forever, watched it uh, fairly decently, but I've mainly stuck with the original Halloween uh, and kind of Resurrection. It sounds weird. When I get to the review of that, I'll explain it to you. But that's probably one of the highest uh, watches for me was Halloween uh, Resurrection. I should probably mute the TV just in case something happens, like the Xbox makes a noise or something. Uh, so, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. What, this, what is this movie about? Well, as you know, the previous film, Season of the Witch, uh, was considered a flop in 1982. And it killed this idea of each movie coming out after Halloween 2, which was Halloween 3, 4, 5... They were supposed to be standalone anthology movies that could have their own little spin-offs, the way Tommy Lee Wallace explained it, and that was a great idea. It was the MCU, really before the MCU existed, even though the MCU leans more towards the Universal Monsters type of thing, of everybody existing in their own, you know, world, but also being connected. It's kind of cool, but um, as you can tell, <laughs> there was a lot of debate on what to do, and Halloween 3 was considered bad. Because every weirdo on the planet went to that went to that movie, not paying attention to the ads, and said, Oh my god, Michael Myers isn't in this, therefore it's bad. That's what happened to uh, Halloween 3. And it's a tragedy. It's a national tragedy. A, a worldwide tragedy, in my opinion. And that poor movie was decimated from history, as good as it is. As much as I love it, as you saw in my previous review. Uh, six years later... <laughs> Six years later, the rights referred back to, I think it was Mustafa Akkad, I believe, and he produced this movie. And they wanted to go back to Michael Myers. They felt like it was probably a stupid idea for them to dance away from Michael Myers to begin with. So think about it. You hadn't had a Michael Myers film in about seven years since 1981. That's how long it took. When I was going back through these movies this year, I was looking at the different years that they were released, and man, you go quite a bit sometimes between movies, like between this film and the previous movie, Halloween 3, and when you go from Halloween 5 to Halloween 6, you have like a good six years as well. 
Um, it's amazing to me how much time passes between a lot of these movies, but it's also kind of cool that each of these movies take place in the year that they get released. I never really realized that until I've watched it this time around. So for example, they reference in this movie, this is 10 years after the original movie, and technically Halloween 2, since they take place on the same night. Uh, Loomis makes mention of that as well. We'll get to Loomis in a moment. <laughs> we'll get to Mr. Loomis in just a moment. But, uh, Essentially, Michael Myers comes back. He is being transported by a bunch of uh, hospital staff to go from one hospital in like a dungeon area to a different hospital to be uh, basically taken care of while he's been in a coma for the last 10 years since he was blowed up back in the day by Loomis himself and Lori. Now, I understand how he survived because he's plum evil, right? I would be fine if he, if he had not survived, but he did. Whatever. <laughs> However, I have my problems. Like, for example, Mr. Loomis. Dr. Loomis is in this film. Donald Pleasance comes back. Great performance. One of his best in the franchise, in my opinion. Not as good as Halloween 1, but one of his best. How did he survive? I don't know. They see We, we see the scarring and stuff on Donald Pleasance's hands, and Michael Myers' hands, too. We see it on Donald Pleasance's face. This carries over to Halloween 5 as well. But how did he survive getting blowed up? There is no way. <laughs> there is no way. That is some weirdo movie logic type stuff that should not exist, in my opinion. Uh, I think Loomis should have stayed dead, as much as I love Donald Pleasance, as much as I love his performance in these movies. Loomis should not have survived Halloween 2, in my personal opinion, um, with the event of the ending there. <laughs> but somehow he did. So now we have Michael Myers, who wakes up in a coma, or out of his coma. Maybe he wasn't even in a coma. Maybe he was just playing all these guys for like 10 years. It's kind of like Dumb and Dumber 2. Uh, or Dumb and Dumber, or no, the, whatever the one is that actually has Jim Carrey in it, uh, <laughs> and Jeff Daniels. Anyway, so he plays these people, he wakes up when he's getting moved, and he's in the ambulance, and he just starts killing everybody in the ambulance after he hears them talk about how Michael Myers himself, you know, himself in the, in the ambulance, how he has a niece named Jamie, who is the daughter of Lori, I guess, is what they basically said. They basically said that she's the last living relative, and she's in a foster home in, uh, in the... Myers area, the old Haddonfield area. So Myers, after hearing this, puts his thumb in one dude's forehead, and it kills everybody in the ambulance. It crashes, he escapes, and he goes after Miss Jamie Lloyd, played by Daniel Harris, who is a very young girl, probably like seven or eight when this movie came out. And I'll tell you this, she's one of the best contributions to this franchise. I love Loomis, I love uh, Jamie. You know, she's probably my favorite character in the film, aside from Donald Pleasance, and probably one of my favorite characters of the entire franchise. Uh, I think Danielle, Har Danielle Harris, in general, is a phenomenal actress. She's wonderful here. She tries so hard to be so good in Halloween 5 with how bad that movie is, how bad that script was, how bad the utilization of Jamie in that movie was. They really waste her a lot in Halloween 5, but here, she's so good, and she even came back for the Rob Zombie film, she's good there, even though she's playing a little bit of a different role. I'm a big fan of Daniel Harris. If I see a movie that looks low budget, looks like shit, and I see that she's in it, I will watch it. I like her in, in uh, Hatchet 2 and 3, she's really good there. She always brings something good to the table, and I think she's just fun to watch. Something about the eyebrow, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so her being in this, there's no... Lori Strode, there's no Jamie Lee Curtis, but she is Jamie's mom. They've proved that with a picture in the film. And Jamie misses her parents. Uh, we never find out who her dad is. I thought that'd be a cool thing we could find out in Halloween 5, and that never happened. Or Halloween 6, that never happened either. Uh, <laughs> we don't find out who her dad is, but Jamie Lee Curtis is her mom. And it's kind of pitiful because her parents apparently died in an accident. If you've seen H2O, if you connect H2O to, to these movies, which you might not, but if you do then you probably feel very differently than a lot of people. <laughs> but still, uh, Danielle Harris playing Jamie. Jamie is so lovable. There's just something about that kid. She's just sweet. She's depressing. She always looks sad, always looks like she's about to start crying. And you just feel bad for her. She's just an orphan kid. She got adopted into a family. Um, and even her family, her adoptive family, they're loving. But her older sister, sister, uh, played by Ellie Cornell, beautiful, by the way. Uh, Ellie Cornell kind of still holds her at a distance as like she's not a real sister, you know? And there's kind of a nice little character thing going on there throughout this movie because of that. And I really like it a lot, which Halloween 5 ruins that as well. Uh, does nothing special with that. It's really a shame. Anyway, for the writing of the film, I think that a lot of the character stuff is good. I like 
Uh, everything mostly with the concept, except for Loom was coming back. I think that's smart, probably, on their behalf, but also dumb on their behalf, because you can't possibly have explained how he survived. They don't even try, like I said. I like the characters. I like Rachel, Ellie Cornell's character, the older sister. I like the parents in the film. Um, I like the boyfriend character in the film. I think he's cool, uh, even though he's a garbage human being. <laughs> He's still cool. Uh, I like the girl at the store. I like pretty much everybody involved in the film. I think all of the casting, as a matter of fact, is very solid. I do have one thing to say. Uh, as good as the tension is, as good as the tension building in this is, as good as the uh, particular thing involving the rednecks driving around in trucks, which Halloween Kills took this mob mentality from this movie and used that as a reference to that film, I thought that was kind of cool uh, for Halloween Kills, because I'm one of the few who enjoy it. This movie try to be a little bit different. It's almost like a soft reboot of the original movie, and a lot of people don't really notice that a lot of the time. I like that about it. A lot of people don't, but I like that about that. And I think by the time the film hits the third act, it's a little slow building up, but it's kind of an iconic slow. There are certain moments in this, like the original movie, that you have cool moments throughout that build to something in the third act that's really tense, and it's really fun, really cool to watch, really enjoyable to watch. I will say this, I think the ending of this film involving how to get Myers away from everybody, it's really cool. I like all that, I won't spoil it for you, but I really, really like all that stuff. If you haven't seen this film, especially the younger folks out there like uh, Stranger Grayson, one of my friends out there on uh, the horror community, the Goosebumps community, check out his channel, by the way. Uh, Stranger Grayson, he does horror movie reviews, cool kid. Uh, Stranger Grayson, my boy Grayson, if he's younger and hasn't seen this movie, I would be curious to see to see what kind of the younger folks think of this movie. Because it's so different from a lot of the franchise, uh, even after it, it's a lot different from a lot of films, including Halloween 5, Halloween 6, and so on and so on. It's got its own kind of energy, and I kind of like that about it. But I will say this, the thing I wanted to bring up a minute ago, the ending of the movie, the ending of the movie, the final event that happens at the very end of this movie, mainly involving Jamie, which was supposed to set up Halloween 5 to be better than it was. I don't think it was a good choice here. I don't think it was a good choice for the direction they went for Halloween 5 to kind of shake things up. Halloween 4's ending, again, I'm not going to spoil anything, I don't like the ending of it. I think it's a terrible ending. I think it's one of the worst endings in the franchise. I think it was a terrible idea to uh, do what they do with Jamie here. And uh, if you've seen the film, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you're watching this review, you probably already know what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't like what happened here. I don't like what they tried to set up for Halloween 5. I think it was a poor idea in general. I think it was a cheap idea in general. Um, trying to make more of a franchise out of this, again, without Michael possibly. It's uh, a little stupid. <laughs> it's a little stupid. The movie has its problems. But overall, I like the look of it. I think the directing is really nice. One of my favorite things about the film is the opening credits, how we just have... No Halloween theme, just shots of, like, October decorations, uh, harvestry, that kind of thing, you know, crops, all that, looking like Utah, probably filmed in Utah. I like all that. It looks like Halloween with the orange lettering for the credits and all that. It's very atmospheric. The movie itself can be very atmospheric, and when it gets there, it really, really gets to you, I think. Uh, not in a scary way, but it just gets you sucked in. That's one of the things about this movie, even though I'm not a massive fan of this movie. I do like it quite a bit, but I'm not a massive fan of the film. I don't love it the way I love certain other entries. Um, like the original, like 3, like 2. I think it's good. It's up there on par with Part 2 for me. And again, sometimes I like it better, sometimes I like it less. But it's it's got an atmosphere that Halloween 2 has in a very different way. And I really like that about it. I think it's one of the best things to appreciate about it, because it's... Uh, probably one of the last times for a long time that we get that. Even though I like Halloween 6, the theatrical cut, we don't really get an atmosphere to it. It's just a stylized movie. Uh, there's not many movies in the franchise that have really an atmosphere after this point. It depends on what we're talking about. Uh, we'll get there. Anyway, moving along, though, uh, the practical effects in the film. There's really not much gore in the movie. There's a couple of moments that are really sick, and when they're there, they are effective, dude. One of my favorite kills in the horror uh, series of Halloween is the truck kill. If you've seen the film, you know what I'm talking about. I think it's great. I love it. It's always messed with me. I swear to God the TV version of this has a gorier version of that kill. But uh, I could be wrong. It could be a misremembering on my behalf, but uh, who cares? Anyway, not really any practical effects per se. There's kind of some gory things here and there, but it's really not a ton. Most of this uh, murder and brutality are off the screen. A lot of it's just Michael stabbing, Michael doing this, Michael doing that. But the tension is more of what you're here for. This feels like a Halloween movie 
unlike a lot of films that came after it. You know, it's, it is what it is. If you don't like the feel and the tone of the original Halloween films that Five just slightly has, but Four really maintains that. If you like that, this is a really good one I'd recommend for you as well. Let's talk about the music. The music kind of took Halloween, the theme song, you know, and it kept it in a synth wave type of feel. Uh, that synthy feel is a little bit different from Halloween 2's synth feeling of the, the theme song. You might like it more, you might not. I kind of like this more than Halloween 2, the theme song at least. Um, I think Halloween 2's fits it better for that movie. It would not fit well for this one with that rendition. This one is a little bit closer to the original rendition from the original movie from John Carpenter. But it also feels more synthy. But a little less synthy than Halloween 2. But it's right there in that ballpark. I think it's a good mesh and I think it really fit for this movie to be kind of a comeback as like a soft reboot in 1988, six years after the, ser after the series had kind of, kind of died <laughs> a little bit for most people. Um, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, is a flawed movie. I think many of these films in this franchise really are. As much as I enjoy them all, pretty much. I think this is a really big recommendation for me. It's a good flick. It's a fun flick, even. It's a really fun, wild movie. There's a lot to really take in from this movie because of how much happens here. And I hate the fact that the next year, 1989, we ruin it again <laughs> with Halloween 5 and killed it off for like another six years until like 1995. Um... It's a shame, but Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, if I had to rate this film on a five-star basis, yes, it has its flaws. Yes, I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, even with its problems, I think it's a good flick. It knows what it is, even if the ending is weak. And if the ending weren't so weak, I think that I would like it more, probably. Uh, <laughs> if I had to rate it on a five-star basis, I'd give it a four out of five stars. That might seem a little high for the things I've said about the film, but overall, I think it's very well made. I think it's a very well-crafted film, and I think, again, after how many times I've seen this one in Resurrection, I still have fun watching this, just like I do the original movie. Uh, it's a little bit less slow than the original film, but still. Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, four out of five stars for me. What do you guys think about this film? I would love to hear what you guys have to say down in the comment section down below. Put your thoughts and comments down below. Down, down there, excuse me. Thank you guys for watching. God bless you all, and goodbye.